Hello, it's Shari here, and today I'm going to be making a Halloween card using the Build a Castle die set. So I'm going to be making a spooky castle for today's card. I'm going to start by using the Build a Castle die set to cut out all the main pieces of my castle. So the body of the castle, two towers, and then that front little piece that goes in front. And then I'm going to use the brick stencil to create the texture on my castle. So I've got some pieces of post-it note tape on the back of this and I'm going to stick it to the stencil as best I can. It's hard to do because this is a very fine detailed stencil. And I'm going to stick all these pieces on here so that I can add the details on all the pieces at one time because I'm going to be using some black glitter paste. So you can see here that I'm just lining up to where I can get all these pieces on here. And since this is a six by six stencil, that's really easy to do. I'm gonna be using some black glitter gel here. And I'm just gonna scoop some out with my palette knife and start applying that across the stencil to all these pieces. I'm not worrying about the fact that it might be up on the part where the little detail at the top goes because you can kind of scrape it off if you need to later but we're also going to cover it up with a different piece of cardstock. So I'm just going to make sure it's all completely covered and I don't have any spots that are missing the bricks. And then I'll just scrape off all the excess and then I'm going to remove my stencil. And then I'm gonna immediately go clean it off so that this doesn't dry on my stencil. But you can see all these pieces now have that glittery brick detail on them. And I'll carefully set them aside so that they can dry because you don't want to assemble this until they're nice and dry. So I'm going ahead and removing all those pieces of tape as well because I don't want that glitter gel to kind of adhere to my pieces as this dries. So now I'm gonna set those aside to dry and I'll go and clean off my stencil before any of this dries on there. I'm just cleaning up the sides, that's what I'm doing. I'm running my palette knife down the sides, making sure it's nice and clean. So while those pieces dry, I'm gonna work on the background for my card. I'm gonna be making a slimline card. So I have a piece of Bristol paper cut with the largest of the slimline rectangles, and I'm gonna be doing some inking with some oxide inks. So I'm starting here towards the bottom with Wild Honey. And you can see I'm not going all the way to the bottom because I'll have some ground and some grass at the bottom that's gonna cover that up. Then I'm going to go in with Crackling Campfire. And then I'll just go back and forth between the two till I have a nice blend between the two colors. And then finally at the top I'm going to use Seedless Preserves which is this really dark reddish purple color. So this is going to be my spooky sky behind my spooky castle. So again I just put that towards the top and then I'm going to go in with the crackling campfire and back and forth between that and seedless preserves until I get a nice smooth blend between the two colors. So now that I have the base colors down on the background, I'm going to take a spray bottle and this is just filled with clean water, nothing else, and I'm going to spray it and then I'm going to zap it with my heat tool till those water droplets dry up and you'll see that gives it a fun texture to the background. I don't want it smooth because we've got a spooky castle here so we kind of want some interesting things going on in the sky. And you can continue to do this until you get the look that you want. So once I've got it dried, I kind of went in with a little more ink and got rid of that really big dot that I had there. And then I'm going to spray it some more and get a little more texture going on in some places where I kind of missed it the first time. So it's easy to add a little bit more to get more texture as you go to get the look that you want. 
So I'm going to come back to my background in just a minute, but I thought I'd go ahead and do the base part of my card so that I can work on the spacing and make sure that the stuff I do in the background is spaced correctly. So I have a Happy Halloween sentiment, and that's from the Pick of the Patch stamp set, and I'm just using that for spacing so I could get my fence die in the correct place. Again, this is cut from the Bristol cardstock, just like the background, and I'm using some Hickory Smoke Distress Oxide to color it. This was the gray that I thought went best with the colors in my card. So instead of using some gray cardstock, I just decided to make my own gray cardstock by using the Distress Oxide. So I'm just putting a layer across all this, the fence and the ground, and then I'm gonna go in with some black soot Distress ink. This is not the oxide. This is the ink and I'm doing the the fence and the tops of the fence to kind of Make it look a little more spooky And give it a little more definition from the ground so that it's not all one color So there's that happy Halloween from pick of the patch That you saw earlier on the block and I'm gonna go ahead and stamp that out and I like to use VersaFine ink when I'm stamping on some distress oxide um, inked paper. So I'm going to be using some more die cut elements from a couple other die sets. This little tree is from the Scout Treat Box Haunted House add-on and I cut it from some of the wood grain cardstock but I wanted it to be a little bit darker so I'm just adding a layer of vintage photo distress oxide to it. I also have some ghosts and some spider webs from the Build a House Halloween add-on. So we're gonna add all these elements to our castle. These spider webs are cut from that pearlescent vellum, which I think is really cool. And then I'm also using a few stamped images. The tombstones here are from the Spooktacular stamp set, and I'm actually gonna fussy cut those out so that they look like they go with all the die cut pieces a little better. You don't have that border around them. And I'm also going to stamp a few small pumpkins and they're from the Happy Harvest set. So the tombstones are stamped on some gray cardstock and I'm gonna stamp these on some orange. I'm gonna fussy cut those out just like the tombstones so that we have that nice crisp image without that edge. And then I just went in with a green colored pencil and colored in the stems of these. So I've got a piece of black cardstock cut with that same slimline rectangle. It's just going to be the bottom. I've also cut a circle from some vanilla malt cardstock, which is that creamy color cardstock, not white. And I'm just working on my placement of where everything's going to go so that I can die cut the bottom correctly. And then I'm going to work on my background a little bit more and give us some clouds to our spooky sky. So I've got um, some grass here so I know where my moon's going to go, where my castle's going to go, and that informs me where I can cut the top of my grass. And I actually trimmed it down a little bit um, once I got it done just because that yellow that I put at the bottom kind of got hidden by the grass. So I actually kind of shortened that a little when I got to the point of putting my card together. So now I'm going to add some clouds to my background. So I've got the cloud stencil down on that wild honey, but I'm going to go in with crackling campfire and this time I'm using distress ink rather than the oxide. So you can see that I get that nice edge, but I'm using the same colors so that it's not so harsh of clouds in the background. So again, this is Crackling Campfire over Crackling Campfire Oxide, the part that I'm doing right here. So you can see how you get that line, but it's still the same colors. So as I work my way up this background, I will change my colors a little bit because as you can see where there's a darker Crackling Campfire of the Oxide in the background, the Crackling Campfire ink on top you don't see quite as well. So as I work my way up, you see I'm putting it right back where it was because I realized you don't really see the line. I'm going to switch over to the Seedless Preserves Distress Ink, which is the color that I have at the top in the oxides. So you can see when you put that light line, now I can see it a little better. So I'm going to turn my stencil and move it up, do the same thing up here. And then for the very top, because that's really saturated with that seedless preserves, I'm gonna have that same problem with the line sort of disappearing. I'll switch over to something even darker. 
So I'm making sure that all those other colors are cleaned off my stencil. And I'll switch over to some black soot. And I'm just going to go really lightly with this blending brush so I just get that really light black line for those clouds at the very top. So now I'm going to add a little more texture to my background. I'm going to use some Picket Fence Distress Paint and some water. I'm going to add a little bit of water to it so it's a little more soupy and I can add some splatters to my background. So I'm just picking that up with my paintbrush and then I'm going to tap my paintbrush till I get those little dots of white in the background. They kind of look like spooky orbs, I think, in the sky, which is kind of fun. But it just adds even more texture and interest to the sky that we're creating. So now to go along with those light spots that I created, I want to create some dark spots as well. And I'm using a black metallic watercolor that I have in my stash. And I'm just doing the same thing. I'm picking up that paint and just flicking some small dots on the background. Now once that background is dry, I'm going to add it to my card base. So I'm just putting adhesive on all four sides and then I like to put some strips right down the middle. And I've got my card base here that is cut to three and a half by eight and a half and it's side folding and I'll just line that up and put this background on my card base. So now I can start to assemble some of the things and I'm going to put my little gray fence that I created onto the black grass that I die cut. So this is going to be the bottom of my card and then I'll just go ahead and adhere that right directly down to my background. And then for my castle, I felt like with that glitter gel on it it was a little flimsy so I'm just going to kind of reinforce it. So I've die cut all those same pieces again from that storm cloud cardstock and I'm just going to layer the pieces together so they're a little thicker and a little more sturdy. And of course I'm going to do that to all four of the pieces you see here the body the two towers and the front piece. So once I've got those layered together and they're nice and sturdy, I'm going to start to assemble my castle. So I'm starting with the door. I've got those two little door handles cut from some black cardstock, and I'm just going to use my embellishment tool to pick them up and place them in the proper place. And the door is cut from some narwhal cardstock, so a slightly lighter gray. I've also cut the door from some storm cloud cardstock, and I'm cutting the doors off so that I can have a dark gray frame around my door. So for the tops of all the towers, I've just cut those detail pieces from some black cardstock. So it's a very dark castle. It matches the black of the bricks, but it's not sparkly. So you do get a little bit of contrast. And you can easily line those up with the die cut top of the towers and the castle. So I have the two pieces that go in the castle. This shorter of the two long ones goes at the top. And I'm going to go ahead and glue my towers on. And I'm using liquid glue, especially on this. I use liquid glue a lot, but especially on this because you're gluing it to that glitter paste. So it has a texture. So you want to make sure that it gets in those grooves and it sticks down really well. And then this piece is going to go on the front. So I'm going to go ahead and put my door on here. Again, using that liquid glue because we're gluing it to that glitter paste and it has a lot of texture. And then I'm going to glue that top detail piece to this as well.
So here is the little frame for the window at the top. And you just need glue around the outside edges. And then here's our little spider web. So these are cut from that pearlescent vellum. And these are from the Build a House add on, I believe. And they're a little big just as they are. So this one I trimmed down so it would fit above my door. So I just trimmed off one layer of the spider web. And that has a really cool, like, spider web shimmer to it when the light hits it. And then I also have these little ghosts. There's ghosts in the um, scallop treat box add-on as well as the build a house add-on. And I just thought it was so cute him peeking out the door. I just think that's so much fun. I'm going to add yellow behind the window at the top so it looks like the lights are on in the castle. And you get that nice glow that kind of goes with the background. For this front piece, I decided I wanted to pop it up a little bit. So I'm going to add some foam squares. I'm using the black foam squares so they match my castle and they don't stand out if you happen to look at it from the side. And I'm going ahead and putting that on before I put the little windows on the towers. That way I know where to place them. So I cut the frames from some narwhal cardstock. And then the inside pieces are that yellow cardstock as well, so that those windows also look like they have a nice glow inside. And then I'm going to add my second spider web. This one I did not trim down, so it's going to overlap the window, and I'm going to tuck it behind the tower. And then for the moon, I want it to glow in the dark. So I am taking that die cut circle that's cut from vanilla malt cardstock. I am squishing my clear embossing ink pad all over it so it's completely covered in that ink. And then I'm gonna dump a bunch of glow in the dark embossing powder on it. And then I'm just gonna heat that up with my heat tool till it's all melted. And then now we have a cool glow in the dark element to add to our card. So it's still the same color, that kind of creamy color, but it will glow when you've got it in the dark, which I think is so much fun. So now I can place my castle at the top of my grass, and now I can figure out where my moon goes. So I'm gonna tuck it behind the top of that castle. And I'm laying a block on it so it dries nice and flat. And now I can start to add some of my elements. So here's that spooky tree that I added the ink to earlier. And I'm just adding the foam dots where I need to to work on the placement of the pieces. Because that castle kind of has some depth to it. The tree the bottom of the tree needed a dot, therefore also so does the tombstone at the tree. It needs some pop dots so that it is at the same level as the tree. And then I decided I needed to go around my pumpkin with a black marker so that you didn't see the edge of the cardstock. Because again, these are my only stamped images and so I didn't want them to stand out as the only stamped images. I wanted them to look just as clean as all those die cut pieces. And I'm using the black foam squares for almost everything here because there is so much dark cardstock and these sort of blend in when you use them. So they're perfect for dark cardstock like this. This is a perfect application for them. And I'm using a mixture of thick and thin ones. So that was me grabbing the thin ones so that I could tuck this one behind the one in front that has the thick ones on it. And I'm also going to add another little ghost here at the top. You can see I have those bats as well. They're not glued down just yet. But I am going to glue them up in the sky and I like how some of them overlap the moon.
And now the card is all finished. And here is a look at what that moon kind of looks like when it glows. It's kind of hard to do on camera. But here is a look at that finished card. So the moon glows. We have that beautiful sparkly castle which I think is really cool because it kind of stands out from the other elements and I really love the sky that I created too in those sort of non-traditional Halloween colors I just think they're really pretty blended together with that dark castle in the front thanks so much for watching have an amazing day bye